guys, this is Kevin Mench, and this is the first episode of the Big Head Pod here on the Dub Network. And today, I brought a man on here that I've known for, I think, almost 20, 20 years now, 22 years, it'll be. Um, and with, without a doubt, the great Michael Young. Thank you, dude. Good to see you, Menchie. Absolutely. I like we, your shirt, by the way. Thank you. Yeah. One love, man. You know, Bob Marley. Yeah, Should have wore a bathing suit. Yeah. Hey, it's speaking of, I was talking about the 20 years, it could go back to the dry fit shirt from the Fall League. Yeah. I used to bust. <laughs> yeah. I used to have, uh, the first time I met Menchie was um, really in the Arizona Fall League, 2000. And uh, I remember I, I drove my truck, by the way, which was, I don't even know if you can call it a truck. It was a 1986 Mazda B2200 pickup. And this shit was terrible. It was black with no air conditioning. I grew up in California, no air conditioning, no power steering, and a clutch that literally, like, my left leg was the only one getting a workout because I had to throw the clutch through the bottom of the car. So I show up, and literally every guy on the team, I, I was clueless because I'm in the minor leagues, I'm coming through, I never had a car really. So I'm bumming rise to get to the ballpark. So I show up, and uh, everyone thought I worked on the grounds crew. <laughs> Remember that? First time I saw him, he's like, dude, that's not your car. I'm like, yeah, it's my truck. Like, totally proud of my truck. I've had it for years. Uh, it could probably fit behind these chairs. That's it was a it single was. cab, wasn't it? Yeah. You sh- it, it was. It's still in the family, isn't it? No, I gave it to my, my nephew, uh, and that truck quit a while back. Yeah. What Rest do you think it piece. died with? How many thousand miles? Oh, a million, maybe? Few, maybe? Uh, maybe, yeah. Definitely like 300,000. Yeah, but my truck had a nickname. I named it the Bandit. That was remember that yeah. uh, the bandit. Remember the one time I kept saying the bandit. You're like, what are you talking about? I'm like, that's my truck's name. Gosh, and you had just gotten over here because you were traded, right? I'm that- traded. I got here like in uh, August of that year. Um, showed up to Tulsa. I think you were in Port Charlotte, right? Yeah. You were in Port Charlotte, setting the world on fire. I got to Tulsa, kept hearing about your name, and then we got to the Fall League and got to play together. The first time we really hung out. That was oh my gosh, that was a fun time. So you got traded over here. You were a was it the second baseman? Originally, is that why you were brought over? I was a shortstop, and then when I got to Toronto, when I got drafted, they kind of played me at both, which was, it turns out, the best thing that happened in my career because I ended up having to do both. And then I got to, uh, I was playing mostly second with the Blue Jays. I got traded to Texas, like, you're going to play only short. And then I went to the Fall League with you, played short only, and then we signed Alex right after that. And then you're like, you're going back to second. So it was uh, kind of just going back and forth for a while. You came out of, what, was it the Gauchos or the Banana Slugs? Which one was it? Gauchos. It's the Gauchos, dude. Which one? You kept saying Gauchos. The UC Gauchos. Santa Cruz is the Banana Slugs. And yours was UC? UC Santa Barbara. That's, That's right. right. Okay. The Gauchos. Okay. We actually had a, a student, uh, the athletes at the school hated the name. Why? I, at the time, we're like, this is stupid. It's like, it just, we couldn't get behind it. So we actually like encouraged like a new vote for a team, for a new uh, name. And then it was like completely shut down by the students who love the name. It was like over 90%, they're like, hell no, we're keeping the gauchos. So at that point, now, now that I'm older, I totally love the name, but when I was they there. They still the gauchos now? Oh, hell yeah. They're doing great. They're right. like 15th in the country right now in baseball. I don't watch. Yeah. I don't watch. I watch, watch from afar. Do you? That's what I mean. You try. I love coffee. You try, you try and hide. So I remember, so we, get, so we played in the fall league. Gosh, remember that? We had some, some really whack jobs. And I had yeah. actually thought about having one of them call in today. Your boy. Lee Cro- Luke Cro- <laughs> I freaking knew it, dude. That guy was a disaster. Um, remember his voicemail? His voicemail was like, he, you probably knew the, the, the voice better than I do. He's like one of those uh, old country boy from South Carolina. I went to Clemson. Went to Clemson, Clemson boy. Yeah. He, uh, remember that he would, so remember he would sit out there and his whole thing was, ow! That's what he did. He there would, you go. See, you do better than I do. He would start. That was his voicemail. Uh, that yeah, was like if, exactly. Like if you called him, it rang five times, and it would go to that. It must have been a twins thing, because he and then Kilty as well. Remember Kilty with oh, the yeah, whole... Oh, yeah, he's uh, a SoCal guy. His... Yeah. I think anybody knows, Bobby Kilty had this... Sorry, ass... T- <laughs> it was a, it was a, we call it an ass talent, right? Yeah. He could... What was he? Because he'd sing songs. Yeah, yeah. But he'd have to go sit on the toilet to sing these songs, yeah. and it was... So glad you brought that up. Right now. I, I know, I know. Where's Bobby? <laughs> Bobby's hating us right now as we speak. But I mean, you think about it, it must have been a twin thing between Luke Croy that was just. I remember Luke Croy as or Lee Croy at the end of his, his career. He said he was. They were playing in Boston, and he said uh, he was on deck, and uh, he was hot. He took his helmet off. He said, "Stand there." And the kid behind me goes, "Hey, Dad, look! They're letting the coaches play." <laughs> That's about right. Well, he, he had like that that look. Yeah, the gray he hair. Kid, like yeah, and he's a kid. He oh yeah, look. with the gray hair, and he goes, "That's why I knew it was time to hang yeah. it up." So. Man, you, you, you wonder about all those guys that we played with. A lot of them. You know, I think about it all the time, man. I mean, when I was at the, in the Fall League, too, I was getting married, like, yeah. a couple months after that. 
So I had like I remember thinking I'm trying to play because the fall league is like an important place to play well, and I was I was doing okay, but I like I'm getting calls all the time about you know who's coming, like who are we inviting, the venue did this, did that, and my mind is going a million different directions. Um, but that was like a really really fun time. I think you were I was with uh, Jason Romano and Benoit. Those were my roommates. I had Elder and Elder and Spike. Elder and Spike. That's a good one. Yeah. And yeah. then I had the rest of those knuckles, like Mike Curry and Lance Davis, and those guys were all right there too. All those, yeah. gosh, you talk about a fun time. It was being young, and, man. Yeah, but they, you know what they get now? They get rings for winning the fall league. We got jackets. I bounced. I actually wouldn't. Yeah, you there. left. You That's won. right. You were going to the wedding, married. right? Yeah. Yeah, well, I, I had to leave. Like, yeah. like five days before it was all over. I think you sent me a text like, "We won." I'm like, "Sweet, what do we get?" And you're like, "We got a jacket." I gave mine away. I don't so know. I never it, got it. It came down. I think the last day of the season, we all had losing records. But if we won our game. We would move on. The other two teams, they had to. So the coaches were paying money to, to lose the game. So oh, we ended up squeak. Brutal. We ended back into the playoffs and go. Oh my gosh, two more days we have to be here. But yeah, now it was. Who's our manager? Was it Butch? Which one? Butch. Yeah, yeah, Butch. Good dude. Yeah. Man. So we that's, that's we had a good group of guys that came through. Yeah. Right. So that so then the next year, right? You get they trade for Alex. Yep. You're there. I always remember hearing say, oh, Michael. He couldn't be a second baseman in the big leagues, right? All of a sudden. Okay. Alex, get traded. Mikey, go to short. Yeah. Okay. A couple years later. Mikey, go to third. Yeah, I know. And then and Mikey, go to first. Yeah. Uh, you know, short and second was okay. Like, I didn't mind that. Um, if I had it my way, I would have stayed at second the whole time, and everyone just kind of would have left me alone. I would have played. But you know as well as I do, like, up there, you don't get it your way all the time, mm -hmm. right? You know, it's, you have to be able to kind of adjust on the fly uh, because – you know, whether it's playing up there or in everyday nine to fiving, like you just don't get everything you want all the time. So you got to be able to kind of adjust, think on your feet, and, and go. Are we we had some clowns over there. I look, you know, playing. I remember I tell people because I still have my sunglasses when the, with the sun would come down and I'd say, "What would you do in left field?" I said, "I couldn't see. I couldn't even see Mike. You'd have to stand there and have to yell, Mike, if it goes up, make sure you point because I have no clue where." I remember you'd be in left field, and I, I, my back was always to you in the beginning of the game. You go, Mikey, and I just go like this. I knew exactly what you're saying. I'm like, I got it. I'll point him out because I knew you couldn't see shit. Uh -uh. <laughs> nope. And it was just one of those. If it got hit below the stadium, I was just yeah. Pray it didn't. Yeah, it never happened. Something low. I remember I turn around, and just run to left field because I mean it was a crapshoot for you out there. Yeah. You know, I was like the tall whoever was over there. I'd get in there and and, uh, and start yapping it between you and Hank. I know Hank. Would, I'm sure he had some funny things to say. We had that was a fun team, man. I remember when we when we got so when you came up. I think in. 2002. 2002, right? Yep. Yeah. I was up in 2001 because you started in 2002 in, in AA? Yep. Okay. So you were like right there, and then here comes Hank, and here comes Tashera, and then Sori came over. And that was like, honestly, man, that was like, I look back at like my career, and I think about times when we really, really won big, and those are obviously really, really cool memories. But in my opinion, man, you don't have to have to win the whole damn thing to have really, really cool memories. That 04 team, and God, that was man, we listened to the so last week fun. of the season, right? Was that? Yeah. And that was that was so much fun. Like I look back at that, and I think well, like it's such a huge bright spot when I look back and like think about the cool parts of my career. Just because we were all super young, yeah. Um, we were all like playing like totally with no fear. Um, we were never out of a game because we could all hit. It was just such a cool, cool team to be a part of, man. So that was was that the year because we had EY and Brian. Yeah, that's, they, right. that's what I mean. So we had the, we had the veteran guys, the veteran but we also guys. it was such a perfect mix. And it was a bunch of it was a bunch of kids. You sit there and we think young, about man. it. I mean, who was our buddies. older? Was, we had Eric Young, Brian Jordan, Jeff what? Nelson, Kenny Rogers was still here. So yeah, so we, it was a little bit yeah. And they were like the perfect guys for a, a young group, right? Like they would kind of break us in, do the veteran thing, but at the same time, like they were getting. It was like we fed off each other, right? We would learn our lessons from them, but they would kind of like feed off of like the young guy energy. So it was like, damn, it was such a such a good time. Middle infield was twenty five and younger, probably at yeah, that everybody, point. Yeah, everybody, everybody was. We were all. Who else we catching? Oh, we had Laird. Right there. Yeah, we had Laird. Was, was Laird here? He was Barajas. There. Barajas. Yeah. Cankles. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. The combined IQ of oh, never mind. Positivity on the on the on the big yeah. podcast. Yeah, and we. And some of the people always ask, you know, have you ever, you know, anybody that's ever really an asshole who you were playing with? And somebody really oh, just, yeah. uh, see, I, I, I don't th I think we ever had anybody. I didn't I never think had, that like, way. yeah, I mean, they're obviously rare, but like any work environment, right? If we went outside, like, you know, knocked on the next door, be like, does everyone get along perfectly here? They probably wouldn't say it, but like in any work environment, you have people who you really, really love and people who you're like, yeah, I, I, I don't vibe with that guy. It's rare. Yeah. You know, but especially like when you have good teams, that's super rare. 
super rare because those guys get tend to get weeded out. You know, yeah, if they don't but we've did, we've I've never been had anybody around that like, just a bad egg in the clubhouse that you wanted out really because I think we were enough to keep we were young enough to keep each other in line, but at the same time, there wouldn't be really really any issues. Yeah, I mean, with that group for sure. Like in the early in the two thousands, there wasn't one guy I think that we felt like we we got to get this dude out. Down so, the road, it happened a couple times, but so I was you know people always ask too about different stuff. I was thinking the other day. Why Blake Miller had to start going on the road with us? Remember the whole chair thing incident in oh, yeah, yeah. O- Oakland, <laughs> Oakland. Frankie. Oh my God! I that, yeah, all one about of the, that. Yeah. yeah, that was. Um, so we were in Oakland. It was uh, at the end of 2004. We were, and we were playing really well. Like we could, we were right there for the playoff hunt. There was like a basically in our in our division there was three teams going for two spots. I think yeah. it was us and Oakland and Anaheim were going yeah. for, for two spots. And uh, we're playing Oakland in a huge game. I remember Hank was hitting. I was, I, on, I was on deck. Where, where were you? I at? was at the helmet rack. Okay, I was so the first probably, one to see it because okay. that's why I was standing there. Because you know how the dugout is dugout's massive, huge. On deck circles. In the I'm other way park to park I was on deck. Hank is like might as well be in San Francisco hitting. I mean, the thing is, it's really it's a football field, yeah. right? Like so, it's stretched out in weird ways. And you, but you get a clean look right into our bullpen, which is like. On and that's the what field, I was basically. standing there because I was looking at the helmet rack. And I and brocale, you know, because the mound so it stands up where it's almost. And by her brocale, and I looked, and I think I, the next thing I remember saying was, "Hey!" Yeah. And all of a sudden, then we all, I think I remember out like, of the box, and I didn't look. Did Hank just drop his stuff and just? No. <laughs> Hank did the classic like Hank look, right? So he's hitting, and he's like, "I'm right behind him on deck." This thing came out of nowhere. It wasn't yeah. like it was building. Uh-uh. At least as far as we know, it wasn't building. Yeah. And long story short. The fans are right on top of the bullpen in Oakland. Yeah. They were saying a couple of things to our guys. With that 2004 team, there were a bunch of guys there who weren't going to take too much from a fan, right? Unless you, like, shower them with praise, they're probably going to fight. So, sure enough, it was going back and forth that we didn't know about. And next thing you know, Hank steps out of the box and does the Hank look. He looks down there, he's like, like that. And I was like, fuck. Like, I look over there, and you guys are pouring out of the dugout, going to the bullpen. I drop my bat, I run out there, and I just literally see, like, hands going at the, the crowd. Yeah. Because of the chair, I mean, I'm letting the whole cat out of the back here. Because of the chair, no one, it literally covered up for everybody that was punching fans. There was a full fight with us and the fans. I remember Rudy trying to reach in and grab somebody. I mean, it, trying to? I think it, he successfully did that and let, tuned a couple he, dudes up, yeah. too. And I just remember, I, I, I don't know how... We didn't get hit with that chair where everything happened because so, it came from. So Frankie's in the back. Yeah. And it, it <laughs> I, I hate to laugh, but I mean, Frankie's in the back and it's almost like a movie in slow motion. I remember I was with BJ, I was with Brian Jordan. At this point now, we're, we're sort of taking the first steps to kind of clearing everybody from the railing where we're fighting the crowd. And you see Frankie pick up a chair and it's like a movie. It's like, no. We're grabbing the second, like we all go to Frankie. He lets this thing go. It's like helicoptering towards the fans, and I didn't even want to look. We grab Frankie, who's not a small dude. Yeah. And next, you know, we turn around. It was a lady. Was it? Yeah, it's a. It was a lady, and there's just blood gushing from her nose. And I was like, this is I, not going <laughs> to end well, man. So we, at this point now, everyone's a little freaked out. There's blood. Everyone's yelling at us. We pull everybody off. We go back in the dugout. And um, we, we, ended up, we finished the game. We, we ended up losing. I don't even remember. We ended up losing. I remember it was like right in the middle of a pennant race. Uh, we were all playing really well, and I went like 0 for 4, had a tough game. I went back to my locker. I think EY was there. And I'm like, well, no one's talking about my 0 for 4 today. <laughs> <laughs> and here comes, here comes the press. Uh, I think we got Frankie out of there. And then the next morning, we look, we look on TV and Frankie's in handcuffs. Like first breaking news story in ESPN. Well, so I wonder if Blake had come because I remember after as soon as that happened, Blake was traveling with us. Yeah. So it's, um, and that's why I just remember that of, of seeing that. But I just I don't even remember the how the chair cleared as far as it did over the body. Superhuman strength. Yes. Chucked it. Yeah, but I mean, to, and to not hit any one of our guys. I know. I don't even like. The whole thing was, was a total blur. Looking back, it makes even less sense today than it did then. But I remember, like, then sure enough, that kind of doomed our, our postseason chances, man, because our bullpen was, like, the most important. We could hit, yeah. and our bullpen was, like, lights out that year. So Frankie got suspended for the rest of the year. I think um, Almanzar, 
got suspended for like a week and a half or something. That's right. We a couple guys suspended. Yeah, that's like, right. A couple guys. We only had like two weeks left in the season. Yeah. And that just doomed us. So it was a, it was a crazy time. The next day, like again, Frankie in handcuffs and the whole thing. Like we were, I think we were in the clubhouse. We might have had a day game. Probably. And, and we're watching this thing, we're like, holy shit. And Frankie's got cuffs on, and he's like smiling. I'm like, dude, stop smiling. Stop yeah. smiling. Stop smiling. Like, <laughs> like try to get him to clean it up a little bit. But I mean, Frankie recovered. I mean, he ended up having, still having a good career. Um, but that was a wild, wild ass night in Oakland. And we, oh my, you just, and then <clears throat> was it the same year or was it the next year with the one that happened in batting practice? Remember with Laird? That was the same year. Adam, was it Adam Kennedy? I think, I feel like in 04, 5, 6, 7, I feel like we got in like a couple of fights a year. Um, a batting practice one was the best one. Batting one was the best one. I remember, um, yeah, we were, uh, <laughs> Adam Kennedy and Laird, I guess the night before. I, again, I didn't know about this either. I, I remember no, like, Kennedy, I think Laird said something to Adam Kennedy. We were getting boat raced at the point and bases were loaded. I think he was leaning into pitches and Laird goes, come on. Something it, like that. Something like that where he told Ken, Adam like, Something about yeah, that. Yeah, 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 don't yeah. just it was a long don't, time yeah. ago, but and then I guess like Adam didn't like it and said something to him the next day during BP because we're stretching right when the Angels are finishing at BP, and Laird might have said something back to him which wouldn't be so we were wouldn't be odd. So we were sitting right by that that front right there, and they were they were talking about it, and Kenny's like, man, he swung on him. Yeah, well, he at first he goes he goes he goes you know he goes man that's not cool we shouldn't be doing that you know you know disrespecting type of thing, so so then everybody goes down the stretch so it's Brian. It's BJ and Laird at that side of the cage. The other side, it's myself, EY, and Gary Matthews. Mm -hmm. And they and you guys are walking down. So you guys are all the way in right field playing catch at that point. And I me and I remember hearing um, uh, he, Adam Kenny said it's something else. And, and uh, Brian George just gave him like a bear hug. He's like, oh man, it's all good. Just messing around. As soon as Brian let go, that's when he took a swing at Laird. And he missed Laird, but then there's Brian who's Dude, just... Dude, that was the biggest mistake he could have made. If you're going to swing on Laird, make sure BJ is, like, on the other side of the stadium. And Brian had him against the backdrop. Like that. Yeah. Next thing you know, we're all pinned up against the net. Yeah. But honestly, we didn't even need to go. It could have been BJ versus their whole team. And yeah. It would have been... That was the biggest mistake uh, is doing that. He was BJ. so and BJ pissed. was hot. He wasn't starting tonight. He, he wasn't starting. Yeah. Like, begged to get in the lineup. He was cursed. He was yeah. yelling, buck, buck. Let's he goes, I was... Oh, my he yeah, so he's like, you got to play me, you got to play me, you got to play me. And there was like, he'd get on first. And this was in the days where in double play balls, you can try and knock the middle infielder into the, into the left field. He's like, I remember he said something. I forget who, where he was hitting. I might have been like leading off or something. He goes, if I'm on first, he goes, please hit a ground ball. Please hit a ground ball. Please hit Because he wanted to absolutely annihilate Kennedy at second base. I, you just, you wonder why people get so defensive now. You talk about that, actually breaking up double plays, right? And it's... The way, the way the game has changed now, yeah. I mean, we can't, you can't do anything. I know. So for me, like, I think I understand why they want to protect players, right? You want to leave the best players on the field. You don't want to lose Buster Posey for any stretch. He's that great of a player. But I feel like now, the way they do it now is you have to basically just slide into second base. So basically, just you're just playing catch. It's stopwatch baseball, right? Third yeah. baseman throws here, second baseman catches it with no fear of anything, throw it to first. I feel like there's a way you can take guys out to break up a double play without having the, this guy worry about his legs and they get broke, right? Like basketball, we were right? always taught, yeah, like, we were the always underneath, taught. whatever they call it, underneath the basket. Right. You have to slide by this point right. then exactly. to be able to, yeah, exactly. So you can have the best of both worlds, right? Like you can, I mean, there it was at that point it was wheels off. I mean, you can just basically just <laughs> yeah. jump into a guy's leg and well, something's that's, gonna happen. That's what started with Utley right, doing it. Chase. But like, I was always taught like. Two rules, you hit the dirt first, it could be there, inches away, hit the dirt first yep. and keep your spikes tucked in. That's it. Yep. So if you hit the dirt first and just slide right through the guy, he's got to find a way to get out of the way. He can jump, he can yep. not. But either way, now, it makes the middle infielder, and I play middle infield, dude, so I'm like cool with it. You, you've got to be able to have the footwork as a part of turning a double play, right? So you have to have a little bit of like the idea of like, shit, man, where's this guy coming from? I remember there were certain guys who were on first base, like Torrey Hunter, Scott Rowland, those two guys stick out in my mind. Darren Erstad. And from second base, it was harder because it's, could, it's blind, yep. right? Um, you can't really see. But, like, so if, you know, if, if the ball goes to Hank at third and yeah. I'm playing second, and he, like, bobbles at first, second, I'm like, oh, shit, get a little yeah. bit. Come on, yeah, let's go, yeah, let's go, yeah. let's go. Because this dude's, like, gaining on me. And um, if short, you can kind of see him at a peripheral vision a little better. But I like, actually like that part of the game, man. Like, it's, it's, a, it's a fine line. There's some gray area there. Uh, but I kind of do miss that part again because now it's just, you know, they just, they just play catch and they turn double plays. That part sucks. I understand the collision thing at home plate. Um, I get it. I totally get it. But, I mean, 
I see both sides in that one too because you basically leave it up to the catcher. Because like, if, dude, if you and I are running at third, I remember like when the rule was in place, I would round third, say it's a big run, or yeah. it's not a big run. The first thing we're thinking is, show me the plate, show me the plate, show me yeah. the plate, give it to me, I'll take it if you give it to me. But if you're all over it, like the second you get to about 10 feet, you're like, I'm crushing you. Yeah. I got no choice. You have those catchers too that just do the old stand and then the last minute. Right. The but deep. they're off, they're off yeah. and they're like that. But like most catchers, like I remember like I played in playoff games when I was like last year in my career with the Dodgers. And I hit a sack fly into the right field. And I, first time, right when I hit it, I'm like, that's deep enough. It was a big run. And we had a guy coming in from third to score. Mark Ellis coming from third. And Yachty wasn't going to give it up. It was too big of a run. Yeah. And Yachty's just planted right here waiting for the ball. So he's like, I'm going to get hit, but this is too big of a run. Like, yeah. I'm willing to take this shot. So uh, in my mind, it's like about the catchers kind of make that call. But either way, like, I totally understand the rule. You don't want, again, when Posey breaks his leg on a play like that, you, that's something you want to avoid. I get it. Covering the, protecting the plate too soon. Because when we were able to do it, you, as long as you could reach the bag, yeah. I mean, I'm six feet out. So yeah. if you're turning, I was thinking about the picture you have at home that you saw with, I think it's Ronnie Belliard sliding in where you're jumping over. We yeah. teach our kids the same thing. To, right. to, and if they don't slide, what do you do? Where oh, you Right exactly. Here. You're gonna get you're in duck now. Oh yeah. I my, my son the other day he had the same play. He was uh, he uh, he was playing shortstop. He had like a, it was to his left, so it was like classic unassisted yeah. double play. And um, we were in the backyard, kind of going over the whole thing. And he steps on second, and he throws, and the ball kind of went high. First baseman caught it, yeah. came down, got double play. And he got we got in the car. He's like, man, because the double play was weird. He goes, the runner was like right in my way. He goes, I don't want to hit him. He's like, what do you do? I'm like, he threw it right at his head, like. He'll he'll duck. Trust me, he'll duck. Like he won't like if you if you see it coming, they're gonna, especially little kids. They'll oh, like yeah. peel off and go into right field. And if they, they throw don't, it at him, he'll get down. If they don't, the if first they don't, time that's why I got helmets on. That's we had one play yesterday. A kid did the same thing. He ran right into our kid, didn't slide. Yeah. And, and I said, Mark second base. I said, we told you what to do. You know how to make him slide. Yeah. Right. He'll get down. It's not people. You want to say you're dirty. It's not. It's just like I'm throwing it right to first base. Just right like there. catchers stealing third. Right. Guy step out of the box. You yeah. don't throw right. You throw it through, right in their ear hole. Yeah. People know that's you'll learn. You'll learn. And if people don't know the lingo, I've had yeah. people parents yell, but oh, you're trying to hurt somebody. No, I'm not. I mean, here's the, I, I, I get where parents are coming from. You don't want little kids to get hurt. I understand. But this is like, you try and compare it to like watching a major league game. I realize there's a massive difference between little kids and, and major league play. But like, by even signing up, you're a little bit in harm's way in any sport. Yeah. Right? Like, these balls, like, if you get hit by them, it sucks. But you can't expect the shortstop to like come in like this and be like, well, if I don't hit him, I'm throwing the ball over the dugout. Yeah. Well, no, like you're not going to have this kid make a mistake. This kid's got to learn to slide, right? You're going to be out, but you're already out. He's already stepped on the bag. You're out. Get down. And again, I'm not saying aim for aim for between the eyes, but you're aiming for the first baseman. You're aim- the first baseman's there. If the runner's in the way, he's got to get out of the way. You know, it's, it's just part of it. You know, you've got to get used to that part <clears throat> of the game. And then it's just what you're talking. It's, it's an old school mentality, just like the. Rudy, Rudy always talked about you know, hitting wise, right? Stay in, spin their cap, stay through the middle field. And I always tell our kids, hey, stay in the middle field, spin their cap. You know, and if you're coach, coach, that's dirty, this and that. I'm like, what are you talking about dirty? dirty. It's just, it's a folk, it's not, I'm not physically saying kill this kid, yeah. but I'm trying I'm to trying tell to you. Him to take it back up the middle field. Exactly, and that's what I mean. It's just, it's, they just hearing that as opposed to, because as we get older, right, kids become more and more stupid. So we have, <laughs> So, it's, so we have kids warming up, right? So and on deck circles on deck for a reason, right? Yeah. And when you were on deck, you weren't standing next to the dirt, were you? No. Beca- never. And I, so kids yeah. do it this level. And yeah. I'll, hey, I'll tell coach, tell your kid to back up. Yeah. I said, why? I said, because when you get into high school, or these kids, you're close enough to that. They're dumb enough to yeah. throw it right over your head. Oh yeah. And and they're. Uh, yeah. It, because they just think about they think about the now. Yeah. And I said, now we're playing up. Bigger kids, and I mean, heck, we played a team the other day. This kid was probably throwing low 90s at 15. I was like, Fuzz. Yes. Yeah. And you got kids that are 12 trying to face something. Just, yeah. But you've, you've got to learn, right? The only way to, to improve on it is, is to learn. So, I mean, it's, oh gosh, coaching just in general. Yeah. I, you don't do it though, do you? you don't. I coach my, so I have a, my my 12 year old, uh, he plays select ball, and he's on a, on a team where the coach is like, I made a point to get there. It's, co- please coach him. Because I think, like, with when you have a kid and you know, the, pe- the dad did what we did, I think sometimes the coaches are a little tentative is the wrong word, but they, they don't know what we say to them in private, right? So I feel like they, they want to, they're a little bit walking on eggshells a little bit. 
So I remember made it a point. I, mean, I pulled him aside. I said, dude, you coach him. I put him in here to coach him. If I didn't want him to get coached, I wouldn't have put him on your team. So coach him. Don't worry about me. And I, I was like, dude, you have my word. I will never, ever sell you out to my kid. I'll never tell my kid, don't listen to your coach. He doesn't know what he's talking about. Because if I said that, then he's done. Like yeah. my, He'll say the most perfect baseball thing, but my kid will always look at him sideways. So I don't do that. Even if my he says something where a uh, coach told me to do this, I'm like, okay, fine. Like, and then when we go in the backyard, do our thing, we go to the cage, or we go to the field, and I'll tell them what I think. Uh, but it's never in contradiction to what the coach is saying. I just don't think that's a very cool thing to do for the coach. But yeah, my nine-year-old, I, kind of, I, I coach the team, but they're all, a lot of those kids are really kind of in, uh, in truly in baby steps for baseball. So they're learning basic stuff, man. Basic, basic. Is, it, are they, is that kid pitch? Oh, yeah. So they'll learn. First year kid pitch for these nine-year-olds, right? So it's basic stuff like, where's the, where's the force play? Uh, on basic ground up baseball stuff, which but, is cool, which is really cool. Yeah, because if that's play. that's the best way to learn. I mean, it's, yeah, it went, yeah. and, and if a kid's gonna yeah. get hurt, like you said, or you talk to him, just, look, you, you can yell, they, they're, it's okay. Yeah. I, we yell at our kid the same way, you're not yeah. gonna hurt her. But you're right though, they don't wanna be, but I think a lot of, a lot of these organizations too, people, they pay this money. Oh, so yeah. if you're coaching, hey, I'm like, here's, I'm paid, but I'm gonna tell you what, what to do. And you, right. No, no. no, that's what they. Th it's it's that entitlement of what. Yeah. Well, even the kids nowadays, though, the entitlement, right? It's, yeah. I, we talk about this about this whole the old school, which is how we grew up playing. Which is hopefully, I mean, that's how, what you instill in your kids how to play. The, or you have the new school. Old school is about the team. Right. New school is about how many Facebook and yeah, bad flips also, that are flying. Yeah, I know. Uh, dude, I know. Can you imagine? No. We were, <laughs> I, I mean, I get it. Like, I, I want my son. My sons to have a great time playing. I want them to enjoy it, and I understand it's a different game than the one that you and I grew up playing. And I did tell them I was, you know, bat flips are like a thing. Like when guy hits a home run, now they like want the content of what he did for the bat flip, and it's celebrated, right? I'm not saying it's bad. I'm not saying it's good. I'm just questioning why it's celebrated. Why is that something that's like, wow, that bat flip did like three revolutions? That's incredible. Like, why is this something that all of a sudden became a thing? I just don't get it. And I think with baseball, I think when you talk about these little unwritten rules, and everyone says these baseball rules are shit, they should be like, these unwritten rules should be tossed out. Like, I have my, my opinion on that is, in baseball, we don't have the opportunity to settle scores very much, right? In football, if someone talks shit, that next play, they can get maimed, yeah. right? Because they can take matters into their own hands. Fans don't care about that. It's part of the, that's part of the reason why they yeah. like football. NBA, right? They, the rules are a little different now than you know when I was a kid watching the Showtime Lakers. But like, if there's a hard foul on one side, heads up, it's coming it's on coming the other side because they can handle it. In baseball, we don't have that option. There's a dugout over here. We run out. They go to this dugout. We don't really cross paths very much. Mm -mm. So, and we also know in baseball, it's a game more than any other one where there's a lot of failure, man. We've all gone this road where we've gotten beat up in this sport. You know, like not just physically, but mentally. And, the, and I think with players, when you see a guy walking around acting like he's got it all figured out, like, look at me, the lights on me. Players in a weird way are like, all right, cool, good job, great game. I'm going to bring your ass back down to earth right now. Yeah. And that's just the way that baseball players are wired. It's changing a little bit. I have no issue with it changing. But I also have no issue with, I have no issue with the way that Fernando Tatis plays. I love watching it. I'll watch that guy all day long. I have no issue also with the way Madison Bumgarner pitches. Like, you look at me sideways, I'm going to drill your ass. Mm -hmm. And I don't give a shit what you say, I don't give a shit what you think about it. I have no issue with either, you know? It's, it, this is the game that these guys play. And the players at the end of the day are the ones who settle it. You know, not on Twitter, not with the media, not saying this guy's right, the players will settle it out there. The umpires, it's, they say they, they want us, they want the players to police them, but it's, I mean, now you, I mean, at some, originally, at some point, we're going to be talking to you. Well, excuse me, Mr. Robot. Is, yeah. yeah. I mean, what are they supposed to do? It's, I mean, my philosophy is, like I said, I'm old school. I'm, you look at guys, act like you've done it before. Yeah, Larry Fitzgerald, that. NFL. Touchdown. Here you go. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And that's what I mean. It, it, granted, it's, it's, it's big home runs, whatever. Yeah. But if you're down eight, nine runs and you're high stepping yourself the first. Agreed. I agree. Yeah. So like for me, whatever, like my son and I, we, we, we talk baseball and I'm like, listen, when it comes to you, right, and you hit a home run and he even said it, man, he because he hit, he hit a homer. He's like, man, I should have bat flipped that one. I was like, <laughs> kind of had to gather myself a little bit. And I was like, why though, buddy? Like, why? Like, do you need, everyone saw you just hit a homer. 
right? It was awesome, we loved it. I've got it on the video, super proud. Did you need to add that little bit of theater at the end, right? Did you need to do that? Your teammates like, came, out of the, you know, came out of the dugout, they're all fired up, that should be good enough. Like, I want you to show emotion, a ton of emotion when you do well. If you like fist bump, boom, yeah, they do the whole let's go thing, God, what let's go is like the new kid's mantra. Everything is let's go. Let's go. You want breakfast? Let's go. Want some lunch? Let's go. Everything's let's go. So you want to say let's go, cool. But you don't need to continuously draw attention to yourself because the game will kind of turn around and it will find a way to humble you, right? So just like, again, like, to act like you've been there before mantra, I have, I'm totally cool with it. Like, show emotion when your teammates do great. Like, yeah. be the one, like, saying good job, like, patting them on the head when they do great. Show emotion when you do well. Like, I, I love that part of baseball. I love part of sports. Um, but when it comes to, like, celebrating yourself, that's when, like, I'm, a, I'm big on, like, teaching my kids, like, confidence with humility, confidence with humility. Like, go on the field thinking, I'm going to whoop everyone's ass, but you're humble while you do it. You know, like, so that's, that's something I always talk to them. Like, don't ever forget that feeling, even when you're doing well. Yeah. We, uh, like I said, I told you about the play yesterday. The kid, actually, the coach came up and said, hey, this kid would like to apologize after. And that's what you want to you want to see. Sure. Kids taking on us, man. Sure. Granted, I was an ass. I should, all right, how do I? Because, right, things can carry over. And, it, and I remember saying, if, if that guy comes up, when you take note, right, what happened? You drill him, and you, and you move on. But, I mean, Granted, they, you know, at, at the major league level, guys are throwing a lot harder. They did zero control, right? Yeah. So, I mean, uh, people getting domed all the time. Yeah. I mean, but they also have full body armor on, right? Yeah. Face guard. I mean, yeah. Just give them a catcher's mask to hit with, you know, everything else. And they're standing on the plate. And But it's, you just, I've had even had umpires come up and say, hey, I missed that pitch. Is that, yeah. That, that's what you want to know. Hey, yeah. That's when you know somebody cares, right? Yeah. Somebody takes you out and they come in or they take you out at second. They're like, hey, you good? Just to make sure, right? Because you Absolutely. knew it. Absolutely. And yeah. that's, that's what you, that's the respect that's, of the game they have for you and for the game totally itself. Agree. Totally agree with that. Like, if I went in hard on a guy in the middle of the field and, you know, they turned the player or didn't, whatever, but I did my job, I'd always like, it wouldn't make a spectacle of it, but I'm like, good? He's like, yeah, yeah. Boom. Get back up and go away. That's it's just a small little gesture to say, listen, I know that this is the, this is the tough part of the game. And I'm acknowledging that, you know, because you all put in the work yeah. to get to that exactly. le that level. Exactly. I mean, think about it, exactly. the camaraderie that we built in the minor league. I mean, I know mm -hmm. you you got traded over after yeah. your draft, so you didn't have but guys that you came up. But I came through the organization, so this is that you build that camaraderie, right? You don't you don't get big time meal money. You're at McDonald's and everything else, but the, you're close knit, yeah. and that's what it is. I think it's. That, I look at it as a hockey player mentality. Those guys, I mean, you think about it, Western Canada, there's, there's not a lot. They're just, right. they're a close-knit group. They come from, and all of a sudden, they, they get to that level, and it's just, it, they're a hockey player, just a different breed in itself. You, you grew up in Southern California, so you didn't have much hockey. No, that's true. Yeah. So, I mean, it, yeah. you don't even know what a pond looks like that's no, frozen? No, no. I, I, know I know hockey players are great golfers. That's like my, that's, that's cool. And I love, like, dude, there's, there, I still don't even know all the rules of hockey. But I, but if you put me like you drop me at the yeah. at the AAC and watch hockey live, I'm like this is the coolest thing I've ever seen. Absolutely, yeah. it is. It's I know I know they tried different stuff to follow the ball, follow the puck, and they, they different stuff to try and keep yeah. people engaged. But I mean, even anything when we were playing right, it was baseball. It was just about baseball. Yeah. Now it's what it's become an amusement park, right? right and baseball is going on out, and it right. right just. Right. I think like I think for me too, like the major league way. They're doing it now. They're trying to bring younger fans in, right? So I understand like why young fans think about the game the way they do. And again, like I'm not, I'm, I'm the last thing I want to do is come across as like a dinosaur. I, I want the game to evolve. It should. Yeah. It should always kind of get better and get better. And we should be willing to take risks in order to make that happen. So I have zero issue with with that. Um, I just want to make sure that like the game is always like in, in in good hands, right? And I want to make sure my kids are learning valuable lessons and learning how to do it. I want them to be humble. I want them to, you know, not come off the field bragging about what they just did. And I want them to, when they're, if I don't want them bragging when they come off the field, I don't want them putting on a spectacle that looks like bragging while they're playing, right? I want them to show, again, show good emotion, show like pure like joy of why they're enjoying playing. But the second it takes on a look at me vibe, I think there's a, I think it's a little different. That's just my opinion. Yeah, you see guys pounding their chest and, and this, yeah. and you just. Yeah. And, it, dude, I, I've, I've played in, like, big postseason games, too. Like, there, there is a difference, yeah. right? There's a difference, man. Like, at some point, like, when you get in those big games, like, dude, wheels are off. But we're letting it all hang out. But, like, to your point, it's like in the eighth inning of a Tuesday day game and there's a six-run game, like, please have a little feel right now. Yeah. You know, just have Yeah, the short fuse. And, yeah, people don't know what it's like to play a night game. 
Yeah, or especially when a sweat goes extra innings, wake up, and the day way go, and you're playing. And you're, yeah. Oh my gosh, just a getaway day too, and yeah. you got a pack. And you're just like, oh my gosh, I just want, just yeah. want to get away from, just everything at, at that point. But it's, you know, that's people what people talk about. Like, I think it's there is like a level. That's where I think like when you get later in your career. And I think I've talked to other fans and they players say like, man, I gave that a bat away. And they're like, how do you give that bat away? Like, this is like your job. It's like, it's not that I wasn't going up there <laughs> trying to, I wasn't intentionally trying to get out, but like, dude, like maybe like, Hey, I'm having a little trouble on the home front. Um, I'm fried. My hamstring is like this close to popping. I can feel it. It's hard to kind of go in there with like all the, you know, stuff it's just you day usually 13 have of a two week road trip where you don't have eight in a row. It's, it's, you're in Baltimore in a day game. It's a thousand percent humidity, and like we're not, I'm not complaining. There's a lot of money. Players are making a lot of money, so like I'm not saying that oh, yeah. um, any way that they're you know that they shouldn't be giving. They're giving full effort, full full effort. But it's basically a player acknowledging, man, this is the time when like it's hard. Like, and, and you ask any player in any sport, there's a certain point of the season where this is when it's really really difficult. Like for me, it was always August. Yeah, right? the dog August, days. That's the total dog days, right? Like, it's almost like you you start the season, you got you're usually healthy. And you blink, and there's the all-star break, right? And then all of a sudden, August rolls around, and all those little things start adding up, right? And in baseball, because you play every game, once you get hurt, you don't shake it. Yeah. You have it oh. the rest of the way because you don't have time to get rid of it, right? So once you kind of feel something, you're like, okay, I got this the rest of the way. And you're just hoping that one other thing doesn't pop up, but they do. And by the time you hit August, you're like, holy shit, like, oh, my body's starting to, like, this, it's starting to go this way, and I still got a lot of games to play, right? You're not in September yet. Uh-uh. You got a long way to go. You're right, and that's just, especially here with the heat getting here. You know, we talk about, you know, we were, we were playing, right? Didn't, we didn't see a lot of the shift, right? We would hit hit Rudy wherever it was pitched, right? You you were the best at just that little flare right up, right? With yeah. two strikes over the, yeah. and now, I mean, it just, you look at the way they get, now they want to take it out. They want to make the bases the size of the, yeah. this chair. Yeah. I mean, I, I've seen like um, I've seen I, I kind of see both sides, right? Like my first initial thing is um, the shift is it's up to the hitter. Yeah, to hit but you teach after. your kids right to hit them, right? right? Be, not yeah. be one. It's like any other sport. You're not one dimensional. Right, right. So just like hit one off your watch and like just throw a lawn dart out there and get yourself on first base, right? I always thought it was like that simple because I'm always like one thing that I've learned as a player and seeing the other side of this issue is that I shouldn't look at it through my own eyes. I should like listen to everyone else's take on it, listen to other hitters' opinions on it. Because I talked to Matt Carpenter this year at spring training with the Rangers, guy who I have a ton of respect for, has had a great career, and he's always been like a line-to-line, really, really good hitter. And he was in the cage like working on these new techniques to get him to hit the ball in the air more. And I gave him, like, I was like, dude, I was like, dude, I got a lot of respect for like, you've already had a hell of a career. Some guys like had, have had Matt's career, he comes in on a non-roster invitation. Some guys back down, I'm retiring. I'm not. Yeah. He's in there still fighting, fighting for it, right? So I remember saying, dude, I got a ton of respect for this. And we start talking about the shift. And he's like, man, he goes, trust me. He goes, I understand what people say when they say, just, I'm left-handed. Just knock a ball over there. He goes, the stuff in this game and is so much better than it was 15 years ago. He goes, it, I've tried it. It's not easy just to stick a ball over there. It's not easy. He goes, I've tried it, and I, you know that sometimes when you're trying to move a yeah. ball and you foul it off that way. Yeah. He goes, I fouled off more balls and found myself more O2 counts trying to beat shifts. He's like, so he goes, once I get O2 counts with guys with this kind of stuff, yeah. I'm screwed. He's like, so I got to go, this is where you see guys going the opposite way. I got to get on the attack. Yeah. And exactly. I got to be able to ambush any good pitch I see and try and knock that shit into the 10th row. Because once you get behind, you're screwed. So I, it's interesting. Like I, I, I'm, I'm with you on this, right? I'm like, damn, just beat the shift. Like, get on first base. Like, um, and now I'm kind of like more. It's got to be more uh, like game situation specific, right? Yeah. If, if I'm, you know, if you a guy like you, big strong dude comes up there, and we're down two, and the guy on, and it's, you know, maybe you can beat the shift, but I'm like, dude, hit it to the moon and tie this game up, right? Yeah. It's like more game, game specific. I, I don't know. I mean, there's there's so much. Uh, it's like anything else. It's all numbers driven, right? Anything now is numbers driven. We weren't, you know, we had one hitting coach, right? We had Rudy, mm-hmm. and if anybody else walked in that place, he would beat the living shit out of them, yeah, yeah. yeah. right? For yeah. the strongest human beings you've ever met, strongest five five, five eight guy of all time. Oh my gosh, he He's put awesome. me in the headlock one day at, <laughs> at the cage, <laughs> and if you even popped off, he wasn't saying he'd just come up and grab you. He didn't oh, yeah. care. Yeah, he just didn't. 
Yeah. Rudy, the one of the top, probably the top, him and Oscar Costa. Yeah, I remember Oscar. But he shook my hand and I thought it broke. Yeah. I told Tito, I said, Tito. Yeah. 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 So we had some we had some good some good guys with that. Yeah. You were talking about the batting cage. And was, <laughs> oh my gosh! Remember the Coke machine we used to have? Coke machine? At the, yeah. At the old ballpark. Yeah, right there, that, over there in the corner. Yeah, that got destroyed. Who busted it up? The Cobra. Oh, of course he did. <laughs> um, <laughs> Brad Fulmer. Remember when he got Brad over Fulmer here? Did. Yeah, yeah. I, he was. Uh, he came over from um, from the Angels. Yeah, he was a different breed of cat, man. I think, I, I want to say, after us, that was it. I think he retired. Oh, because I think, did you ask him where Hank asked? He said, what are you going to do this? Oh, he goes, I'm going to sign with my couch. Yeah, yeah, that's right. He signed with his, yeah, yeah. He shut it down after that. That's like, he's like one of those classic guys. Like, all these, like, different personalities you come across playing this game. And he was like, he's one of one. Like, that's the, that was a special, the, the, special but, dude. <laughs> I remember he was coming, and we were, I think we were in Oakland. And uh, I was, me and Christina were sitting there waiting for somebody to come out, and Brad's, uh, girlfriend, fiance, something walks over, and I'm like, um, "All right, we're out of here," or something like that. And she's like, "Yeah, I'm right behind you, just waiting for Lucifer." <laughs> I was like, "Holy shit!" She just called her boyfriend Lucifer. So remember, because we had, I remember he, if he would be in the cage, nobody would want to go in there with him. We'd go on the other side because he, he had that, and it'd yeah. be and full on body, just yeah. full sweat going, and he took it out on that because we came back from a road trip and we were in the cage and we walked. Oh my! Yeah, he, I used he, to hit with him in off seasons in L.A. too. So I've known he had destroyed that. Yeah. That was what was the other story with the, uh, the the parking gate one. Remember that one? We were going. So remember we we were going to the road. They would close the west gate. Oh we yeah, had, when he went through the he went he put a dr- uh, he was comforter on his he Mercedes. put a blanket over his the front of his uh, grill of his Mercedes and just tried to go right through drove- the gate. <laughs> Of course, it didn't go, and he went the other side, and I think he did it to the other side, the other end. Couldn't realize how he had gotten in there that night. Like, you're like, dude, you're on camera. We see who this is. He may have been the, the most... <sighs> My best Brad story was um, he would get on the plane, and um, the rules have changed now with alcohol on flights. Like, even now, and it's amazing that we did this then. Now, because when you go from city to city, say we're going from Texas to Anaheim, a bus picks us up, and takes us to the hotel once we land, right? Yeah. So no one's getting behind the wheel. So some guys will have, have a few. Well, we would say we're going from Anaheim to Oakland and coming home. From Oakland, when we were playing, there was still like alcohol on the flights when we head home. And when we get home, there's no bus. We're all hopping in our cars and going home. So like, the fact that they even let us do that for the longest time was just awful. They don't do that anymore. I think if you're going home, it's a firm, there's no alcohol on the flight. Just... But either way, one time Brad was like, <laughs> He throw in these dips the size of this table, right? <laughs> and when he would talk, like there was just like grains of Copenhagen flying everywhere, right? So he's he's one time we're on the plane and I got like we were all in the back because like the young, the old the some of the guys have been around a couple years ago in the back we just hang out and talk and one time Brad gets me and he starts talking about hitting and Brad loved talking about hitting and I got nowhere to go, dude. I'm like this. I'm I'm sitting here. I got like a tie on because you know it's like on the road. And Brad's talking to me. I'm just going like, I'm just eating it, right? So finally, I just said, you know what? Fuck it. I'm just gonna just sit here and wear it, and I'm gonna go in the mirror and see what I look like when it's all done. So Brad's talking. He's like, yeah, and, uh, and this guy's sitting here, sitting inside, and I'm just like, and it's going eyes, ears. I'm, I'm like, I'm trying to spit it out. I feel it in my ears. It is everywhere. So sure enough, like I'm looking over there, and you guys are laughing hysterically at me. Not one of you assholes came and bailed me out. I'm just sitting there eating. Nobody Everybody wanted to mess with the cobra, though. No, yeah, exactly. I get it. I do get it. So sure enough, I'm like, uh, uh, Brad, um, I got to pee. So I go into the bathroom, open it up. I look in the mirror, and I'm just like, I mean, dude, it was it was everywhere. It was everywhere. And I had already had helmet hair, right? So no, nothing penetrated my, my hair. And it's like, I'm just going like, it's brown, but I could see it like glistening in there. And just like, like this, like this. I'm like, this is just, uh, it was unbelievable. It smelled like a can of dip. Good times. Yeah. Bro, gosh, yeah. he was funny. He would, like said, nobody even wanted to, it wasn't the fact that he looked like he was going to kill you. You just didn't want to be. But you, he was one of those guys too, when you get him like one-on-one, uh, he was really very, cool. very really down to earth. Cool. Yeah. yeah, like he was easy to talk to. Like all he wanted to do was hit. Like he was like he would. Uh, there was like stories of Brad. He would um, you'd see him going. So when we got to the hotels, we'd all have like our carry on, and we go in there, and Brad would like have like two of his bats and like batting gloves on, going up to his room, and he would like 
we all knew what he did. He'd get his bed, he'd flip it up against the wall, he'd roll up his socks and like be in his room like with a T, like whack, like in his room. <laughs> I'm like, dude, you, <laughs> that's what he would do. I mean, first of all, they're rolled up socks. We're not going to hurt the wall. You don't need to flip your bed up, but whatever. He would do that all the time. He's, he was, threat, he was probably the best, the best character that we had been around because oh. it was, I mean, we think about the guys that we had just had, had had some sort of issues, right? We had Rocker, we had Everett, but there was <laughs> never any beef between them. It was yeah. just right. Rocker wouldn't care. You know, somebody would come to an interview and he'd be sitting there and it'd be a female reporter and he'd be here and he'd be up behind him just, just flossing away. Uh, dry. He, he just he, didn't. He did exactly the kind of stuff that now it's like, if there were more cameras around, that's how you get thrown out of the game. Um, it used to be sacred ground, man. Uh, yeah. it, it, and it's not anymore. It's not. Yeah. Well, nowadays, guys, I think it's way different, too. Guys aren't really hanging out in the clubhouse as much as they used to. They don't. That's what EY said. He goes, you get on a plane. Yeah. Nobody, nobody's playing cards, right? Mm -hmm. Those guys would get back there and play for, for hours. Yeah. It's the same group of guys dropping money left and right. And he goes, EY goes, no, they're just more concerned with how many followers they have. They don't. Yeah. There's not, like I said, that's why I said this new school. It's not, it doesn't seem like there's a lot of team with mm -hmm. these veteran guys that are there, you know, like a Madison Bumgarner or something like that, that can pull the reins in. But mm -hmm. I think it's just gotten so much where it just the reach, social media yeah. wasn't big when we were playing, right? Thank yeah. goodness. Because who, who knows what, like, what would have happened with us? Yeah, I know. Especially the amount of crap it that we pulled. It would have been, it just would have been different. Like when you have, when you have eyes on you, it's a little different. Again, dude, like, I, I think these guys nowadays, like, they, I think they all want to play really well. They have a lot of, like, tools at their disposal to get themselves better, and they're all, like, really, really dialed in on it. Like, I watched, like, Corey Seager in spring training, and I was like, damn, this guy is, like, 100% dialed in on making himself a better hitter. It was amazing. Like, he'd go, like, in the cage. We'd go in the cage, like, whack, 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 whack. I'm loose. Let's go play. Corey's, like, swing. You can see it's, like, all right, that's what I want to do, or boom, swing again. All right, this is where I got to adjust. He'd come out of the cage, he'd have like a tripod, and he's like looking at all of his swings are recorded, every last one of them, and he'd break it down, swing to swing. I'm like, damn, there's a reason this guy's like really, really good. So like, I think a lot of them, they're really, really big on just how to, they're, they're, the tools of making themselves better are like more individual specific, so they attack it like from an individual basis. We used to kind of attack it as a team, but we didn't have as many tools these guys have to to get better, if that makes sense. I, I know, I know it's, it's more and more information. You know, I didn't. Oh, I, we just wanted to know how hard somebody threw, yeah. and you know what they threw, and then you know Rudy would have videos up, we'd watch to see, and right. then it would be okay. And other than that, but it just seems like it's. Yeah. I mean, look, what, what would we do? We'd go underneath and look. Well, they didn't actually have the cameras the first years because the tunnel, right? Maybe we had to go up and see with, with Josh and look and then see. Okay, Maybe we got VCR. it. Yeah, it'd be, <laughs> it was a VHS. If you go in, there's a you have to, to put the thing in, rewind it. It go. Ch -ch 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 and then sometimes you hit play too early. It's like shit, and you gotta hit it again, and it take like. Or it'd be blurry for the first till it actually started yeah. recording, and yeah. yes, and it's. All I, just, I wanted to see was one at bat. Next thing you know, there's two outs. I'm like, God damn, I can't, I gotta go back. You gotta run all of it. Exactly, yeah. and it just and then, and now it's all. Well, it was all set up back upstairs. Now they had the yeah. big the, in the old ballpark, the old room, and I don't even yeah. know what it looks like now. Who knows how it's all set up in there with, with everything else. I just. Like I said, the less I knew, the, because the more I had, the more right. I was thinking about stuff. Right. And I played better when I was hungover because I wasn't thinking about <laughs> hitting. I was thinking about not throwing up. You had the sixth tool, man. Exa exactly. Yeah. But, I mean, that's the stuff that we you don't even you don't even talk. Nobody yeah. talks about. It's just it's all gluten-free. And, and, man, I, I, want, I want a cold beer. I, was, yeah. I remember we were in Chicago one night, and we went in the weight room with Fernando, and I had a beer. I was drinking Bud Light, just doing work. <laughs> work. Working out, you know, because Buck was really a stickler about everything he would do, right? Oh he my had God, yes, yeah, yeah. I, especially the weigh-ins. Yeah. The weigh-ins were the big ones. He yeah. was sitting there, and he'd come out there, he because he knew I didn't. We were bucking heads. He would get oh pissed. You mentioned you gonna weigh in today? Yeah. No. Yeah, <laughs> they did the weigh-ins all the time, and it was like, here's the thing too that, that then was we worked out differently. These guys again, like I'm actually like I wish I could have played in this era. Like the way they they have so many avenues for players to improve, right? Like here, basically it's like. Lift this, this smoothie, this for dinner, this for lunch, go. And it's all provided. I'm like, damn, this is like, this is the way to do it. This is what pro athletes have nowadays. Like for us, like you said, it was, what did we have like for breakfast? You walk in on a day game and there is nothing but a layer of donuts. Yeah, like you're <laughs> hey, 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 donuts hey, everywhere. To hit a sinker, you yeah, need a sinker, yeah, right? Yeah, donuts everywhere. And I'm like... <laughs> I know. I remember thinking, like, I know this is a, this is 2005, but this doesn't seem right at all. Like, we're like freaking major leaguers, and there's just nothing but donuts are sitting there provided. Um, 
So it was way, it was just way different, right? We would work out like after games in Texas. What the hell kind of workout are you going to get in after a night game in Texas? You just sweat it out pounds, and you think you're going to get a clean workout in. So like then we start coming in like around. I'd come in around noon or one to get in an actual good one when you're fresh. Yeah. So like the game is like totally changed anyway. Going back like they have you weigh in like after a game. He's like you've dropped a couple pounds. I'm like, you think, dude? Like, how about I drag your ass out there and make you stand out there for three hours in this heat? Like, of course I dropped a couple of pounds, man. I'm like, and you think you're helping me out by giving me donuts tomorrow morning? Like, this is the stupidest thing I've ever heard in my life. He never had this relationship. He with the rules with Buck. It was just, he was great. The rule, right? Anything would happen, right? Rule guy. He'd be out there. He did. He would say some funny stuff, do some funny stuff. But we just and you got we had to, at his expense. Guys would bust his chops and everything else. But it was, I just. Hell, I mean, people ask, he worked out, and I go, well, what decade is this? There's, there's no, and who yeah. thinks at 20, yeah. how your body's going to feel at 45? Oh, for sure. And right? I think it was also, again, like, for a guy like like, like you, I think of, like, like a, a Josh Hamilton, like, they were, like, just naturally, like, strong dudes. I'm like, I need a weight room, man, because I'm going to melt out there. Like, I need to work out if I want to keep up with these guys or else I'm screwed. So I knew I knew that about myself right away. Like I've got to I've got to do this. You know, like every, pretty much everyone on our team would like me and Sori were probably the same size, but you and Tex and Hank and Lance and like you're all big, naturally big, big dudes. And they just and it's just I mean you would go into the scene and just see how your body would react because now, but you said now they've got so many different oh yeah it's whatever awesome. vitamins and yeah. anything else to help Take with this. with yeah. yeah. But it's still it's still not like you said playing that extra inning game or delay and you got to get up next day for a day and you just. Oh my God, it's like, and dude, when we played, there were guys, I won't say any names, dude, but there were guys like who would drink during the game. During the game. I remember, like, again, I won't say the name and I won't say the team we were playing against, <laughs> but like, I'm playing second base, he gets on second base, and he's like, hey, what's up, Mike? I was like, I was like, I turn around, I'm like, I'm pretty sure he's fucked up right now. <laughs> it was like in the seventh or eighth inning, right? So sure enough, like, after the game, I called the visiting clubhouse. And I'm like, hey, is, uh, is this dude like drinking during the game? He's like, pretty sure he is, right? So I'm like, all right, tomorrow, do me a favor. I'm like, yeah, I'm not going to narc anybody out. And I know at this point, you know all the clubhouse guys so well. I'm like, just watch him between innings and see what he does. So he calls me like at 3 in the afternoon. He's like, I put a trash can like right by his like locker. So he's probably <laughs> tempted to throw all of his stuff. In the so I'll call you after the game. So sure enough, the game ends. He's like, he drank nine beers today, one every inning. Nine beers, right? So the next day, right? I'm like, you've got to be shitting me. He had nine beers. He goes, nine beers, all crumpled up the exact same way. I, he goes, I witnessed the whole thing. And he goes, and I had one of the younger clubbies just watch him just to make sure. Keep that account. It's just, yeah, keep it. Got an abacus up there. Oh yeah, yeah, exactly. He's like, he's like, it was definitely nine. Like it was 100 percent nine beers. So the next day, I'm like, I'm totally gonna call him out right now. He gets on second base. He goes, same thing. What's up, Mike? I'm like, dude, how many beers you drink yesterday? He's like, that's bullshit. It's a total rumor. I've been on tequila for weeks now. <laughs> Didn't didn't give a damn like beer and tequila during the game, like that to me. Even like for that era, I'm like, some of these guys are psycho. You knew the guys that had the rough night the night before. They were out during stretch. The other team that had long sleeves on. They stood out there trying, to, trying, just trying to lose every, everything they had, and you could tell. Yeah. But man, these, some of these guys had iron stomachs where they could. Well, it was a different era, dude. Like, you have guys who would go out. I, I'm definitely That's part convinced. of the regiment, curls and beer. Yeah. Yeah. But there's, a, and I think it, like, phased down. Like, the 70s and the 80s, I'm amazed those guys are like, they're like Keith Richards. How are they still alive? Yeah. Right? And then the 80s, like, the 90s will come, and here then we're in, like, the 2000s. And there were still guys kind of going out and doing their thing. But, again, the greenies were a part of the game then, right? So guys would go Red out. Red beers. They would drink, 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 drink. <laughs> the next morning, they would take a, a greenie, boom, play, boom, they're back up. Again, I... I uh, not to, I'm not getting on a soapbox, but part of me was like, I've always just been deathly afraid of drugs in the first place. <laughs> like, oh, take this. It's like a vitamin. I'm like, I know I'm young, but I'm pretty sure that's not a vitamin. Like, I know it's a vitamin. It's just an unmarked when I see capsule one. Yeah. that you're telling me to take. It's I not know your... a vitamin when I see one in your shady green pill right there. Like, that's not a vitamin. How about, like, I feel okay right now, and I'll holler at you down the road if I need one of those. And the I'm guys, like, that would. <laughs> Yeah. Guys, when we go into the coffee machine, we're going to get over here. And, yeah. and that's what, you just, you never knew what the hell that was. Yeah. So we were, so one year, Frankie Francis was, he was growing tobacco at his house. Remember this? And <laughs> this stuff, I was just thinking about this. In his front yard, remember that? No. <laughs> so, no, it doesn't. <laughs> so, 
No, he, we're, we're get that, we get out there. We're out there early, you know, because we always got four pitch and catch and hit. And he brings this tobacco up. And he gives some to me, Virgilio, and Wetland. He, he goes, here, try this stuff. About three minutes in, I'm standing there. I, I, I couldn't move. I put it back in the trash can. I just laid there. I just laid on the ground. I, could, I couldn't move. I literally couldn't move. And I, oh my God. I go. How did you say yes to that? I, by the way? Frank, he's like, it was it. Because he was like, check this out. I was growing it. So he take, Wetland takes some. In that case. Virgilio yeah. would come f- later on. He's in the shower. He's butt naked, but he's just standing against the wall with his head down. I said, what's wrong? He goes, whatever was in there. I don't know what it was. I couldn't even, we went out to hit. I couldn't even hit. That's how bad it is. Luckily, it wasn't even a workout. It was just us. And Rudy's like, what the hell's wrong with you? I go, Frankie gave me something. And then, there, then there's Wetland. Loving every minute of it. Give me some more. Oh, my I God. Mean, you guys are insane. There's no way Frankie would have said, I grew something in my front yard. Tobacco, Try this. Can, it's great. Yeah. He would grow yeah. in his front yard. And I remember I just, literally would have ran in the opposite direction. Uh, somebody from the media asked me what was wrong, and I just, I don't think I could answer. <laughs> you, you know, you get to the point, and you're just like, uh, and just laying there, and, and, and I just... Like, guys just, I mean, that's just when guys, it was so fun, crazy. right? Guys hung out together. Everybody was out, you know, regardless. You had your guys, you went out to eat. You had, yeah. I mean, you had different stuff. Making I watched you Ling- out, Making you trip out before games. Unbelievable times, huh? I remember we were, so we were in San Francisco. We went to, was it Morton's? Across the way. Yeah. So we went, and Lingus, uh, this is the most impressive thing in the world I've ever seen. He ate, he ate his 48-ounce ribeye, porterhouse, half of mine, had... What'd you say with Lingus? I know, but what'd you say you ordered? Forty-eight ounce porterhouse. You know the one that Yeah. You ordered that for you? Yeah. I had half of mine. He ate all his, half of mine. So it's it was me, Kenny, and I think Rafi, Lingy, and and you know, all, everything comes all these sides. So I started so I started taking the sides that were Kenny's and pushing them towards Lingus. Yeah. The Kenny stuff. And Kenny got mad because like, so Lingus probably had a hundred ounces of food that night with like ten beers. Most and he never gained a, never gained a pound. I literally stopped listening when you said you ordered a forty eight ounce porterhouse for yourself. Hey, nutritionally enhances, as Pastor oh Church says. So, and like you know me, Mikey, I'm built for comfort, not speed. Yeah, right. And for taking psychedelic tobacco from a teammate in his front yard. That's how you roll. Never again. Yeah. Whatever. And <laughs> never again. Why do any of that stuff? But yeah, but it's. I mean, I miss Lingy. I don't know. Yeah. Lingy was Lingy was the man. Lingy took yeah. took really good care of us. He didn't. He was a fun dude just to be around because yeah. he would get. Uh, yeah. He was just a guy. He would go from I'm sorry, spring train. He would go from the field mm-hmm. to outback, have a full meal, a bunch of beer, and he would hit Burger King on the way home. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Lingy, Chris Lingus was our traveling secretary for all those at home. He was. Uh, he's no longer with us, but he was the he was the best. He took care of us, took care of all of our families. He was awesome, and he had a the appetite too um because i couldn't there's you eat all that much food you just yeah great because i think we were just designed just to eat enough but i saw that i'm like i'm gonna do the same thing i don't care yeah right yeah anything anywhere you go we tried different food seattle was my favorite just because i, I would have like dude if i had ordered my like standard eight ounce filet i think i'd been shamed i'm glad i didn't roll with you that night oh yeah we you get out there and just start and just you just crush food, right? You get, especially <laughs> if it's a day. It's a day it, it, you, you come in, you just want to crush food. That's what it's yeah. right. You, I yeah. the spread killers. Yeah, I love going it. in there. Yeah, yeah. I, that's what it was about. Because think about it, in minor leagues. What you had a you had a card that's, table that's with, really with PB and J. That's actually a really good point. Like I think when everyone got to the big leagues, like we think we're going to eat like kings because you eat such crap in the minor leagues when we were there. Like nowadays, like they actually get a decent meal after pre and post game in the minor leagues. Really? Like, even an A ball. They get a decent meal. Dude, we would, um, again, this is like me totally dating myself and talking about and back in my day and shoveling snow stories. <laughs> but like, dude, we would play a, an A ball. You'd play a night game and me- we'd have to go like, we'd bang on windows at the drive through McDonald's <laughs> on the road because they didn't give us dinner after the game. Where we was this? Nothing. Too. Everywhere. Well, on the road. So, like, in the Florida State League. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Or in the South Atlantic League. Yeah. Like if you're on the road, they didn't feed you after the game. So it's now it's like 1030. You showered up. You, you're... You're hopping on the bus. You go back to the bootleg hotel. You Bates come out hotel. and you're like, I'm starving. Like, I've got to eat something. And they I'm weren't having a room service. <laughs> no, no, exactly. I'm lucky. If, lucky if, yeah, I'm just lucky there were no bugs in my room at that point. So, like, we're lo- literally walking down the streets of these, like, deserted little towns in the middle of the night, like, trying to find food. We don't have a car because we're on the road. So we're banging on windows in fast food places saying, we just want a burger or some nuggets or whatever the hell you have there. Pay, pay for it right here. PB sometimes and, we were lucky, sometimes we weren't. 
PB and J's where that's what it was. It when it, yeah. and that's that's how bad because guys would come in and just complain, yeah. right? Remember, but it happened in big leagues too. Remember, we were we were in Cleveland, and Cy had the, the spread out and had the strawberries. Cy. And Buck goes to Cy. <laughs> he goes, he goes, hey Cy, let me know if I need to pack a lunch tomorrow. Yeah, there were some. Yeah, some clubhouse <laughs> guys were just machines, and spe- that was kind of like fun because nowadays, like, it's different because you're the home team. Or the so the Rangers, if we're on the road, the Rangers would buy the spread so they kind of take the visiting club be kind of out of the equation, right? So really? like the team yeah. buys their own food everywhere they go. So if you got a beef, you just go to your own team and they can fix it right away. But in our day, like the visiting clubhouse guy would like be in charge of the meals, you know? So in certain spots, you know you're gonna eat like a king in certain places. Oh, yeah. Even the big leagues in, in certain places, you're like, damn, this is gonna be kind of rough tonight. What was the staple when we go to Wrigley? Wrigley. Where are you feeling for the visiting team? What was the stable between, like, between, you know, between the I didn't games? Go to you played for Milwaukee. Yeah. Club, but I didn't go to Wrigley very often. McDonald's. Oh, my God. That's McDonald's so everywhere would be. Dog and dog. that clubhouse was no wider than this. Mm-hmm. And they had to, they'd have to pull the, for the hit, for the batting cage, they'd have to put, slide the locker and pull a net out, and the guys would hit in there yeah. during the day. But there were some that were good. Tampa. Tampa had Tampa's a great. Nice remember Tampa with, and New York were. were with wrong. the football helmets. Yeah. Remember you guys were running around in the clubhouse with the football helmets mm-hmm. and everything? Yeah. They did, and then, so then they hired, the Phillies hired uh, 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 Swanee. Swanee. Yeah. I played with Phillies. Swanee was there. Yeah. Swanee. He was That's awesome. what I mean. You had guys that took, that had some really yeah. good spreads. Oakland would have like this, uh, this like OG Mexican spot. And everyone would like complain. Like, hey, Mikey, Mexican again today? And I'm like, and I remember like everyone like complained that it was just terrible food. And every time, like, Mikey, there better be that Mexican here. I'm the only guy who likes it. You better have this here. That and then out burgers. And, I would and love it. With Bubba? Twice. In and out. And yeah, mm-hmm. all the California guys. I'm like, you better have your bootleg Mexican food here. And Bubba, you better have In and out here. I'm then, apart from that, it, make it like as they healthy have, as you can possibly go, but those the better have They have it sitting there. there. It just, the, wherever you were, really varied. I know we can get like crab cakes. You go to Baltimore or something. Yeah, yeah. You go up in the. I remember so one night we were sitting at uh, we were in Yankee Stadium. It was after the it was after the game, and we're sitting there with Juan Dominguez, the savage. Juan, I was I was telling somebody this story the other day. He spoke the Spanish he spoke was it was it was, it was a, off the reservation Spanish. Yeah, so Even he, the Latin guys didn't he's know. Dominican, <laughs> Dominican. He spot he spoke like a this really like uh, I think like. Rare, not rare, but like a different dialect than these guys. He was from the, some part of the yeah. island. They never totally different dialect. And, but he was a different kid, man. Like he didn't. He was um, very like always by himself. Um, he had, uh, as far as adjusting to the culture, was a bit of a, a bit of a challenge for the poor kid. But I remember he was just uh, because the Latin guys couldn't really help because they didn't understand. He would who talk in front of yeah, and they, talk outside with Matthew and like enunciate and stuff like that. But he was really good. He came up and have like some success, but we didn't hold on to him very long. I forget where he went after I, that. I don't even. I just remember one night we're sitting there eating dinner, and, and Delucci's, uh, Delucci's sitting next to me here, and then Dominguez and I, I want to say DeRose or something. <laughs> Dominguez, and Delucci goes, "Hey, watch this." He put some pepper in his arm and put it, put it in front of Dominguez like he was going to eat him alive or something. <laughs> because because cold, of this, man. they. But this is the stuff yeah. that we would do, right? Yeah. I think I took bang practice because Dominguez had a fro. Yeah, good one. But I took went out and took bang practice and a fro one day, and I hit for one, and I couldn't. It was so hot with doing that. But you, that's what I mean. You had some. You had just had some, uh, just a cast of characters. That Those you, guys were. It was really was just a great one. D. Rowe was on the team, and Delucci's on the team. That was a really really fun group. And Gary was here, and, and, and Junior was here. Wilkie was here. Well, I mean, we just had a, you just had a bunch of veteran guys that were all over the place, and we had we had fun. You still keep in touch with anybody? Yeah, for sure. Um, D. Rowe's one of my best friends. Talk talk all the time. Still keep in touch with Delucci. I love that guy, man. I mean, it's always the same thing. It's like we're all most of us have kids now. Uh, you're kind of in like the next phase of your life. So we all have like stuff that we're doing to keep us busy. It's like, I think a lot of people are the same. Like you always have these intentions of hanging out with people, even if, so if they're not in your everyday circle, you're like, oh, let's catch up, let's catch up. Next thing you blink and like five months have flown by, right? So like with, even with Delucci, like he lives in Louisiana, so I don't get to see him, but uh, we still keep in touch with uh, via text and stuff like that. Dero, same, we always keep in touch. He's the best. Tex is down in Austin now. Oh, is he? Um, so yeah, all these guys are still, uh, still you, you're down the road. I mean, I keep in touch with all of them, dude. Like I try and like, I wish I can keep in touch more just like anything else, but hey, dude, I'll, I'll, I'll take, keeping in touch at all is a win. Yeah. You know? Life gets in the way and you're right. There's just, yeah, there's just different, even if it's three, four years, I, I just like bra, I didn't talk to Rod in a while, but yeah. my wife talks with Stacy a lot and I'll get a 10 and it's just like, you just pick up where you left off and that's yeah, what yeah. people are wondering what, you know, what it's like, what are guys doing? I mean, you just, 
It's not that you don't, because you think about it, we're around each other for nine months of the year, day in and day out. That's that's our family. And then when the season ends, man, it's see ya. See ya. Don't talk to me. Yeah. And you don't, because it, because you, whatever you missed, yeah. you'll make up for you'll it with, up for with the amount of time. Yeah. You, the amount in of a time. weird way, even though you love them, like when the season ends, mm -hmm. I remember like going into my car or if on the on the road, um, you know, finding a cab to go to the airport because I'd go back down to California. And I'm like, I love them, but I don't want to see them until February. I'm like, I just need a break. I and that's the beauty of what, we, of what we did compared to what every, everybody else does. You know, football's at once a week, hockey's every, you know, we're, we're there's no, this nonstop, yeah. man. And, and you don't get a break. And it's just, yeah. I, and I think it's just the mentality of how you're wired. But it's amazing though, if you even going out, like you said, playing golf or just playing basketball. I played in a hockey game against the Stars alumni one night, and I, I played hockey growing up. They're sitting out there thinking, I mean, I've got time, and all of a sudden, bam, they've got, but just how the speed of the game of how it yeah. does. I mean, heck, even basketball. I mean, I was, yeah. it's just, it's That's just. That's one thing amazing. I actually like, to, um, my eyes down, I mean, I should, I've been out of the game now for like, my ninth year out of the game. And even like when I go to spring training games, and I like, my eyes are, have, it takes a long time to adjust to the speed of the game now, right? So, like, when you watch, one thing I will say, like, when you watch a game from the stands, like, I love watching a game from the stands like a regular fan. Like, the popcorn, Cracker Jack stuff, like, cool, I'm, I'm all about it now. But, like, I wish fans, one thing I wish fans could see is that the second that you get down to, like, the dugout down yeah. there, you can't feel it from the, from the stands. But the level of intensity down there, it's just, like, a 50 feet away. It's right there. Yeah. You can, like, see it and grab it. The level of intensity down there is so much different than you can understand from the stands. In the stands, you're watching, oh, cool, home run, double play, yay, clap. It is so intense down there. It's so hard to explain the difference. Um, and that's probably the thing that I, like, miss the most. Yeah, I miss the guys, but I, I, but you can't recreate that level of intensity in yeah. anything. You just can't recreate it. So it's almost like you just hold on to that, like, precious memory because you can't recreate it. It's 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 but you were, <clears throat> The speed in the, the new ballpark, we were sitting down field level, those suites, and do, 95 looks like 125. Oh, dude, yeah, no, no, no. Before, like, I was watching one time, the radar gun wasn't wasn't on. And I'm watching this pitcher warm up, and he's like, whack, whack. I'm like, damn. And I remember a couple guys from the Rangers were sitting there, it was a spring training, they're like, what's he talking about? And I'm like, this guy looks like he's blowing gas. They're like, and they start laughing. They're like, oh, they thought I was joking. I'm like, what's that, like, five, six, seven? And they're like, yeah. So I'm like, cool. Sure enough, the game comes on. It's 85, 86, 87. <laughs> like, my eyes are, like, gone. Like, that looked like absolute rocket fuel to me. Yeah. And, that, so. and that's the thing. You just you, This stuff that you miss. But, you know, you get chances to do this, to sit down with guys and, and talk and just just catch up. Not not so much about what you've, you know, what you know what you were doing, but what just what life's done to you and where you are. I mean, they said three kids growing up. You got, we both did. We got oh my God. ways yeah. to go. I so. got, you know, my oldest is... 16, driving. Um, he's on the swim team at school, so he's like he's like 6'2", like super lean and eats everything in sight, right? So it's like the swimmers like burn calories left and right. Dude, I am a terrible swimmer. Like no drowning, huge win for me in the, swim, in, in the pool. Like floaties, shallow floaties. End, cocktail, that's where you'll find me. Like he is like, when we like raced the other day in the pool, we're like, all right, let's race. It was, the, it was like hysterical. Like... I'm like, and this is when you know you're a shitty swimmer because you spend like one lap and you're doing, your form is so awful, you're completely exhausted because you're using muscles you shouldn't be using. And he's just like, like back and forth, back and forth, like moving water around like it's nothing. And then like he gets in and like the hardwoods at my house from like to the, to the pantry are like just burned out from this kid. It's like, it's like his path. It's like, what buffalo. do you think he eats a day then? Because Phelps was, he was doing like 12,000 yeah, calories a day or something? Stop. I'm like, dude, I'm like, stop going. Like, if you're hungry, go to the fridge. Stop going to the pantry because there's nothing like, you don't want to eat that. Like, go to the fridge. There's like fruit, vegetables. But when they're hungry, like, they eat anything in sight. But he's doing great. He'll be a junior next year. So college is right around the corner. Um, and then, you know, seventh and a fourth grader. So just super busy, man. Oh, I know. But just in, the, in the best possible way. Like, you know, like, I've, I've had some parents like, you know, I, a baseball tournament starts at, say you got the 8 a.m. game on a Saturday. Uh, he's got to be there at 7, and the stadium's an hour away. So we leave the house at 6, but I'm up at 5, like, you know, we're making breakfast and oh, you know, yeah. going. And I'm like, this, I would, I, there's nowhere else I'd rather be. Like, I love it. I love hanging out with them. I love, like, watching them play. I love, like, at the end of the game, like, talking about certain things with them. Um, I, 
I get a total kick out of it. My 12 year old kind of understands a little more concepts where my nine year old's kind of like in the, my nine year old's in the same spot that my 12 year old was with baseball a while ago. And like my, my rule is like, as long as he has his uniform on, at the end of the game, we don't talk about the game. I just tell him, man, that was, you did a great job. I love watching you play. And that's it. Yeah. And then if he comes to me later, cool. But my 12 year old now can kind of understand some concepts. So we'll like talk about him a little bit more after the game. But it's fun kind of like telling them things that I see in a game that most people don't, right? Or you see in a game that most people mm-hmm. don't. You know, we, we went to the, um, the Jesuit high school baseball game on Friday. They played down in Arlington. So I took my sons with me and we went to go watch it. And uh, it was like three pitches in, right? And the Arlington guy's on the mound. And I'm like going fastball, slider, before they're throwing it. And, and Emilio's like, what? I'm like, oh, look at you can't see that? Like, it's here and here. Like, here on fastball, here on slider. You don't see that? And he's like, no. Like, looked at me like, you're a moron if you think anyone else can see this. So it's like true. Like, you have to kind of like, like my yeah. eyes are trained up in a, in a way that. Yeah. But eventually it's all going to go, you know, once they get older and, you know, you get those weekends off. You just, where, I know. That's something I'm trying to really enjoy it now because they're going to go to college, man. Like, think about when, when you went yeah. to college or when anyone, any of us went to college, like, that's pretty much it. You come back to check in here and there or, they're all, yeah. but they're all pit stops at that point. Yeah. Once you leave, you're you're gone. Yeah. So I'm trying to soak it all up, enjoy my time with my with my, with my boys. But it's fun. Well, I appreciate you taking time to check in with us here for Always our nice. first for yeah, our first little episode him, of podcast, and hopefully hopefully you had fun. Like I said, we'll be able to catch back up again. Love it. We're sure we'll cross paths yeah. because these he said these kids and just if you have a driver's license number, put it out there so people can avoid <laughs> exactly. avoid Mateo yeah. driving everything. So Dude, he can like I told him I was like, hey man, like um. Seriously, these curbs, like, they don't go away. So stop hitting them. <laughs> There's a pole right there. Like, I'd really love for you not to wrap your car around that thing. I think, oh, my God. I'm like, you're, you're 10 and 2. You're all good. You're safe. Like, can you please, like, stay in your lane? Yeah. So, and I, mean, I think about what I did when I was, I got exactly. my license. Oh, my God. Yeah. yeah. So, but, but I try appreciate and st- Try and stay away from front yard tobacco, bro. Dude, I know. Hopefully I'll see you again next time. Absolutely. Like, in a loony bin or something. Yep, absolutely. So, right, well, I appreciate it, Mikey. You got it, brother. Yep. Yeah.